In this video, I will be showing how to attach the Raspberry Pi, the camera, and the other associated electronics to the Tamiya TT02 chassis that I put together in the previous video. It shows the physical mounting of the components, and how to set up the electrical power and signal connections for the Raspberry Pi, camera, servo, and the electronic speed controller. With this base hardware platform set up, we can then begin to focus on the software side of things. This is the second video in the overall project. The project is to build a deep learning Raspberry Pi controlled autonomous vehicle. The project will cover the system from end to end, from building the hardware, the base RC chassis, and attaching the Raspberry Pi and the associated electronics, and then getting it all working. It then works through the planning and development of the software that controls it all, as well as the training and the testing of various machine learning algorithms to see how well they go at line following. The main aim here is for me to have a bit of fun, to learn by doing, and to document the experiences. We have completed the main TT02 chassis now. The next step is to attach the electronics. For this, we will put a flat platform that rests on the main suspension attachment points. We will use the vertical uprights, the body shell attachment poles, to help hold the platform in position. Now I've cut out a piece of perspex. This is uh, four millimeters thick. It's 300 millimeters long and 90 millimeters wide, if I remember correctly. In each of the corners, I have drilled some holes that align with the body shell mounting poles. This did take some trial and error to get them to align and some further refinement with a file. Just moving the speed controller battery cables out the way. It sits quite flat on the suspension cross beams and is pretty firmly positioned without any play. Now on this platform, we position the Raspberry Pi. Current thoughts are to place this in the middle. So that in the future, if we want to have the body shell attached, there should be no problems. There is plenty of clearance for the Raspberry Pi and the servo driver hat. Yep, looks okay. As well as the Raspberry Pi, we need to attach the camera. So we've got the Raspberry Pi camera attached to a Perspex frame, which I have already heated and bent to shape. And I've cut some slots in the main platform that allows the camera frame to move forwards and backwards. I've also cut some opposing slots in the camera frame, which allows us to move the camera sideways. So altogether, we can move it forwards and back, left and right, as well as twisting. So that gives us plenty of flexibility to be able to correctly align the camera later. We also need to connect up the power. Power comes from the battery and we need to route it to two places. It needs to go to the electronic speed controller as well as to the Raspberry Pi. I will use some spare Tamiya power cables and we'll connect one to the battery connector We'll use the male plug for the battery connection. And we will splice that onto a splice onto a female plug connector, which will connect to the electronic speed controller. We will then run some additional cable along here to a switch, which will allow us to independently turn on and off the power to the Raspberry Pi. With the Pi mounted, the cabling will go underneath and will connect to the V-in and ground terminals on the servo driver hat. That's the overall idea, so let's start building.
Now that the main electronic pieces are attached, let's do a sanity check or a test, just to make sure things are operating as expected. Firstly the camera. The camera was mounted just behind the front wheels, pointing down at a rather steep angle. This was done because the camera has a very wide field of view. We didn't want to get too much external content in view. The key content is the road ahead. Just to see what angle we ended up with, we can take this image into GIMP and do some measurements. Firstly, zooming in. If we draw a line through the back plane of the camera module, all the way down to the base platform or the base plate, and then another straight line along the base plate. Then, using the measurement tool, we can measure the angle that these two lines make. It ends up being around 65 to 66 degrees from the horizontal, or about 24 to 25 degrees from the vertical. So with this camera positioning, if we take a regular image snapshot using the full camera field of view, we still do get a lot of above road content. However, when we actually use the camera for autonomous driving, we need to perform a rapid image capture, which actually requires the camera to use a reduced video field of view, which as you can see, appears to result in a more suitable camera view for driving. And, as an added bonus, if we do some filtering of the image in GIMP again, to try and remove some of the fisheye distortion, it seems that the least distortion is in the road area just ahead of the vehicle, which hopefully will help the neural networks perform a little better. Now moving on to the steering. We need to connect the steering servo to the servo driver hat. Note the color coding, the brown and black are both ground. Also note that the servo driver hat provides the power for the servo. Now turning on the Pi. Takes a little while for it to boot up. You can see the activity lights flashing. While it's booting, note that I originally tried using a 20 kilogram rated servo. The servo driver hat struggled to power such a large servo causing the Pi to sometimes reboot. So I am now using a 13 kilogram rated servo. I think it's around 13. This fixes the problem. Now, if we run a small program to test the servo, I will cover the software in more details in a later video, just demonstrating that the servo functions as expected. Now moving on to the motor. When I first ran this test, the torque tuned motor provided with the kit was a little too quick. It's a 27 turn motor and at its slowest speed, the car was still moving a bit too quickly. So I went and swapped it out for a slower 55 turn motor, as well as using a slightly smaller pinion gear.
connect the electronic speed controller to the servo driver hat. This allows us to control the speed of the motor. As we are already providing power directly to the servo driver hat and the Pi, we should not connect the red power wire coming from the speed controller. For the moment, I will use some additional cables to only connect the ground and the signal leads to the servo driver hat. Eventually, I will simply cut the red wire on this connector. With this all connected up, we can turn on the speed controller power switch and running a quick test program, see if the wheels turn. The 55 turn motor results in a significantly reduced speed, which hopefully will be okay for my initial manual driving. It seems all good to go. So that's the main hardware build finished. It puts all the key hardware components in place, and now we can move on to the software. In the next video, I will start setting up the Raspberry Pi software and ensuring that we can configure and calibrate the camera, the steering servo, and the electronic speed controller. If you want to follow the overall project, please hit the subscribe button and feel free to like or comment.